Hawks. Now, there is Lamont Marcel Jacobs, the reigning Olympic champion over 100 metres, getting ready for the short, sharp 60, giving himself a little chest pat. Had a great season indoors up until he was disqualified for a false start here. But in the press conference a couple of days ago, he said, you know what, actually, that's no bad thing. And then people started chuckling, but he explained it quite articulately and said, well, it means I come here knowing I've got to be pin sharp in terms of my concentration. It was a good answer. It was a very good answer. To get the world record holder versus the reigning Olympic champion in an event is something really special. And pretty much guaranteed to be the highlight of this second day here at the World Indoor Championships. We've got seven heats of the men's 60. Christian Coleman going in the first of them back after his enforced period of ineligibility. Reigning world champion, indoors and out, and world indoor record holder. It's our first glimpse of Coleman for quite some time. Christian Coleman, the world champion, the world record holder, back on the global stage for the first time in almost two years. Hannah, I've I've never I've never done this, and I know you have many, many times. What is what is the mindset and how do you get yourself switched from call room? to stepping on the track. As an outsider, I just envisage being a bag of nerves. It's great that we get these pictures nowadays. It's intensely nerve wracking. It's such a weird situation. You train all year, you're nervous, you're passionate. And what does someone ask you to do? Go and sit for 20 minutes with your biggest rivals in a small room. Um, it can be um, it can be the undoing of some athletes. Athletes are very used to this. You do this from a young age. But I remember trying to explain it to my sports psychologist, who has nothing to do with athletics, and she said, "That's, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, why do you guys do that?" But it's it's about trying to maintain a positive monologue. It's very easy to, to beat yourself in the call room. You really want to stay focused on what was the very last thing you spoke with your coach about. What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel relaxed? Because if you don't do that, it's very easy to spiral into negativity. And you see athletes try and be a bit of a showman. There's always someone in there that wants to chat, that wants to laugh, um, when you might want to be extra focused. And speaking of that, I remember reading somewhere, and I... It might be hypocritical, but I kind of hope it's true. Apparently, in his pomp, Carl Lewis used to walk around the call room shaking everybody by the hand, insisting he looked them in the eye, and he would simply say, thanks for turning up. <laughs> you do think, uh, you know, do you want to try and mess with other people in the call room? It's very nice if you're in there with someone you know, if you're in there with a teammate and you can do it, a tiny little nod or a smile, that helps. Plenty of Italian interest in the men's 60s. What a games for the Italians in, in the in the Athletic Stadium last summer. They they had an unbelievable sequence of performances. Jacobs with the one, Tamberi the joint gold in the high jump. They finished by winning the men's four by one. Extraordinary. Could signal the start of a big period of success for Italian athletics. See a duo from Great Britain relaxing before their 60 meter heats. These guys are so familiar to the indoor championship scene, particularly Andrew Robertson, the sale harriers. Keely Hodgkinson still all smiles. That's great to see. West Virginia. It's like a karaoke session in here. <laughs> the athletes coming out for the start of the heats for the men's 60. we talk about this journey from the cool room to the track, I think you're probably a bit more relieved now when you can get going, get down to business. They've taken those masks off, they've got their spikes on. Down to their competition kit, that's what we call this once you're in just your shirt and your shorts and your number. I think they'll be a bit more excited now, rather than that sort of weird lull on your own in the cool room. So that's the men going out for the first heat of the 60 metres.
Right then, the first of seven heats in the men's 60 metres. The first three coming back for the semis, plus three non-automatic qualifiers. Christian Coleman goes in lane five in this opener. Jan Volko of Slovakia made the final four years ago, 20 times a national champion. Huge amount of experience. Listen to the roar for Alexei Klyanovic. Huge reception for the Serbian national record holder. Alexander Askovic goes in four. Christian Coleman, the world champion, the world record holder, the first time we've seen him in the colours of his country for almost two years. His face is a picture of concentration. Umar Hamid made the heats four years ago. Craig Gill of Gibraltar, part of their national record winning quartet. Bernard Canet, national indoor champion for Spain, nearest the camera in eight. The local support will be on the Serbian in lane three. The eyes of the world on Christian Coleman in lane five. Back from his enforced period of ineligibility and back to prove to us all that he's still the very best. Coleman goes in five. Stop. Oh dear. Now then. That was not immediately apparent to the naked eye. I was focusing my attention on Christian Coleman in lane five. It might be Hamid of Pakistan in six. That would make sense because he's in the lane adjacent to Christian Coleman. Third from the left, if you look at the bottom monitor. And it looks like it is an illegally fast start. Anything less than 0.1 of a second. He would be one of the least experienced Umar Hamid. He represents Sail Harriers, change of allegiance to Pakistan. No, he doesn't think that he should go. I wonder whether he's going to come over to the monitors and have a look. It, it was funny that, Hannah, because normally when you use your peripheral vision, you can tell which lane has gone, but that wasn't instantly obvious. No, sometimes they take the measurement of maybe a movement in the feet that we might not see, a twitch or something like that. And if you haven't got their head rising quite obviously or their body moving, it can be hard to tell. But that's why they've got the sensors embedded in these starting blocks. He has accepted it, so he... I mean, accepted it in terms of he's walking off. I'm sure mentally it will take more than that. Third from the left. Wow. Wow. You couldn't see it, but the computer indicated it was a false start. Volko, Klianovic, Askovic, Coleman, Gil, Kane. Coleman, the world champion, the world record holder, representing his country for the first time in almost two years in lane five. First heat of the men's 60, first three coming back for the semi-finals. Set. This time they're away. Coleman gets a typically explosive start and he's dragging Askovic with him. Coleman easing down on the line. 6.51. He jogged the last 10 metres. He hasn't been around for nearly two years. Guess what? The world record holder's back, and he's in form. Coleman.
Coleman looked so comfortable there. And Askovic did a good job of staying relaxed and using the fast start of Jermaine Coleman, Coleman to pull him through that field. Kane there as well, looking pretty happy with his third place. But Coleman eased down, what do you think? 10 metres out, 15 metres out. Conserved a lot of energy there. Brilliant start from Coleman. Right in the centre of your picture. He dragged Askovic fourth in the national indoor championships for Germany but that was much better he dragged him with him now he's floating across the finish line and what a great last 10 meters from Kane to come through for the third spot he looks pin sharp to me he does I love the toe drag I love the toe drag you get on some of these sprinters as they drive out of their blocks sometimes you see them trip but it's something I think it's almost unavoidable when they're going that fast and they're doing the drive that makes me nervous. I love seeing it on the replay. Coleman looking so relaxed. But we saw that from Ava Svoboda in the first round of the women's 60 yesterday. She looked relaxed and then tense as the event went on. Christian Coleman, the reigning defending world indoor champion, sauntering into the semis by a tenth of a second. Great PB for Askovic of Germany in second, and Bernard Canet came through late for the third automatic spot. You've got to be good if you can ease down in a 60 metres knowing you've qualified. It's all very well thinking back to a Safa Powell all those years ago, jogging the last 20 of 100, but easing down at 50 or probably even 45 metres. It'll be fascinating to watch the speed here of Coleman. He is fourth from the top. Let's have a look, Hannah. You can see it's pretty tight there. Askovic manages to live with Coleman for 15 metres, for 30 metres. And even at 45 metres, you can see the gaps aren't there yet, but Coleman was just able to ease down. It's funny that graphic doesn't give you what we had to the naked eye, the gap between Coleman and Askovic, but Askovic ran fantastically well, giving that phenomenal personal best. And see, look at Kane there, his late fastest point there, over at about the 40 metre mark, 37.9 kilometres per hour, just powering away in that lane eight. Let me say, if I woke up this morning and saw lane eight, after what Majinga Kumbunji did last night, I think, well, go on then. Yeah, usually the athletes like lane four and five. I think a few of them might say, oh, lane eight, yeah, I'm OK with that. No problem. Lane eight in this race, going to Ireland. I could say the luck of the Irish. Maybe that will do well for Israel Olatunde. 19 years old out there in lane eight. But Coleman, just one of the best starters in the business. And, and the absence has clearly not affected his sharpness. I mean, that, that is 6.51 is a great time that most athletes would be eyeballs out to attain. And he was easing down with 15 to go. It's Olatunde in lane eight. We will, oh, I'm glad to see Berens. Brzezinski, I just crossed his name out, the Polish athlete. He was a little bit late to the start, but he is there. In That is our Kenyan athlete, Ferdinand Omanyala. But let's meet all the athletes. In lane one there is Nigel Ellis, world junior bronze medalist from Jamaica. He's run 6.72 outdoors. I haven't got an indoor mark for him. Brzezinski did make the start line. Don't know who's just off having a swig of water. National Polish indoor 200 meter champion. Might need to go faster than that 6.57 if he wants another run today. Favros Muzrapov, Tazakhstan athlete. Maybe his debut indoors. Mario Burke, Barbados. Eric Casado, Brazil, South American indoor and outdoor champion. Lane seven, lane six. Oh, Maddy represented the UAE at the Olympic Games. But here is Kenya's best sprinter, Omanyala. Looks really pumped to be here. African 100 meter record holder. And completing the lineup out in lane eight is the 19 year old Irishman, Ola Tunde. He's the reigning senior indoor and outdoor champion. On your marks.
and then settling into their blocks. First three will automatically progress to the semi-final. Set. And they're away cleanly. Burke of Barbados looking good in the middle, but here comes Omanyala of Kenya. Omanyala of Kenya for me, just pipping Mario Burke of Barbados into second place. Did Olatunde of Ireland maybe sneak that third place? That would be a fantastic run for the 19 year old. But Omanyala looked like he maybe got a safe start there. He's usually a very good starter. Maybe playing it safe and coming through in that latter half of the races. He has been running well on the circuit. Very, very close, that heat. Omanyale was impressive there because he was looking round and easing down, not to the extent that we saw from Christian Coleman, but the last sort of seven or eight metres, he was in control of that race and it was unbelievably tight behind him. Mario Burke. Nigel Ellis, very closely matched, 6.64, both given the same time. At the moment, Olatunde, the Irishman, misses out on the automatic spots by two one-hundredths of a second. Good start by the Barbadian, fourth from the right-hand side, but look at Omanyale, already easing down. Burke got away well. And he has, at the moment, been given the nod for second, just ahead by a couple of thousandths of Nigel Ellis. Really, really tight towards the line. Burke started well and then began to feel the pressure. He may well have been aware of Omanyale out of his peripheral vision on his right-hand side. Watch second from the left here. Watch the Kenyan. Turns. Turns again kind of, kind of easing down. He was confident enough to look around, put it that way. That was an excellent qualification from the African. You'd think Ferdinand Omanyala, he would have more in the tank. If he was looking around, he must have had a bit more in the tank, but it's still, that made me pretty nervous. And there is a confirmed result for heat two of the men's 60 metres. Ferdinand Omanyala of Kenya taking the win in 6.62. Mario Burke of Barbados, 6.64. And a personal best for Nigel Ellis from lane one, Jamaica, 6.64. They will be your automatic qualifiers. And their athletes will have to wait to see how the remaining five heats unfold so that they, they have a spot in this afternoon's semi-final. So 6.51 from Christian Coleman, 6.62 from Ferdinand Omanyale. But remember, Coleman was easing down with about 10 or 15 metres to go. Good, good qualification, though, by the Kenyan. Hmm. I hope he's going to the park later to burn off all that popcorn. Got to do what you can do to get youngsters interested in athletics. If it takes a little bit of popcorn, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Get the feeling that the Serbians and the people here in the capital have been really proud to have this event and have been really looking forward to the world-class athletics that's been all set to unfold. Been a long time in the planning and we've really enjoyed it so far. Probably about halfway through this second morning session. This will see us at the halfway stage. That's Andrew Robertson. He'll be over the moon to be in this brilliant lane eight. Made the semis four years ago. Arthur Cisse of the Ivory Coast goes in lane three. Lala Mohamed Zori, Indonesia. He was a surprise world junior champion four years ago. There's Arthur Cisse. He's in really good form. Third in Turun. Time and time again, he's gone sub 6'6 six, six this season. Semis in Doha, semis in the Olympics last year. Shui Tada, lead leg for Japanese bronze medals in the 4x1 in London in 2017, and Doha two years later. Fode Callan of Sierra Leone, semi finalist in the Commonwealth Youth Games a few years ago. 
Dominic Ilovsky, national champion, indoors and out for Hungary in six. Stephen Abosi of Botswana, he's a 10.46 man, flat over the 100. And Andrew Robertson, twice a national indoor champion, tends to perform really well, and he's pretty close to his PB shape this season with that 6.58. Robertson in eight, and Arthur Cisse of Côte d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, in lane three. On paper, the two fastest, and there are three spots available for the semi-finals tonight. On your marks. <laughs> Tardra of Japan will be in the lane just outside Arthur Cisse in four. He could also feature. But will lucky lane eight deliver once again, this time for Andrew Robertson in heat three of seven in the men's 60. There's Cisse on the right, Tarder on the left. They're in lanes three and four. Set. Now, I hope I hope that that doesn't result in a problem because we had Lyndon Victor very close to the start line landing after a pole vault. I was distracted as I was getting ready for commentary. Now, I think they might, I'm hoping they might go for a faulty rather than a false start. They will be aware of what was going on with Lyndon Victor. And it looked as though there were three lanes, four, five and seven, all had illegal starts. That's such a shame for the athlete from Sierra Leone. I know you couldn't see it from your pictures. Ah, oh, now you can. Great work by our director. There's Lyndon Victor going over the pole vault. Well, maybe, maybe you could argue that they couldn't see him, even though we could, but they would have been aware of the noise. I think they would have been aware of the noise. You're coiled tightly to react to that gun. If something else happens in your periphery, I do think that would have an effect, Rob. So, the Sierra Leone athlete no longer taking part. Zuri, Indonesia, two. Cisse, Ivory Coast in three. Tarda, Japan, four. Ilovsky, Hungary, six. Abosi, Botswana, seven. Robertson, Great Britain in eight. Top three coming back for the semis. This time they've held the pole vault. <laughs> Clearly away, watch for Robertson. Nearest the camera, although Abotzi of Botswana's got away well. Wow, Tarder and Cisse over on the far side made sure. Robertson got run out of that because I think he came under pressure by Stephen Abosi of Botswana. Cisse was the man who came here after a very consistent season. And Zuri of Indonesia, over in lane two, he's come through with the same time unofficially as Tarder. It was pretty close between the three of them. The Japanese athlete knew he was there. So too after Cisse, but Zuri of Indonesia at the moment has taken that third automatic spot. Andrew Robertson, Hannah, just came under pressure and couldn't respond. I think Andrew Robertson was trying to make that happen in the last 15 metres instead of relaxing and letting it happen. But Cissé got a lightning quick start. Tada doing well in Japan there. He's tall for an indoor runner, trying to get his top speed over the short 60 metres. But look at Cissé there. You can see there's effort. You can see he's working hard, but that relaxing motion, he's flowing, his arms are driving. And Arthur Cissé there doing really well to take that men's 60 meter heat. Arthur Cisse will be back. Another high quality performance from the man from the Ivory Coast. Shui Tada had a long journey to get here, 6.57. And Zuri, the youngster from Indonesia, took the third automatic spot. Abosi will have to wait and see. The Olympic champion, Marcel Jacobs, goes in heat five of the men's 60. He will be aware that the world champion and world record holder, Christian Coleman, has started brilliantly jogging his way to a 6.51. Time for the Italian to deliver. Here are the 
minutes, first of all. We'll go through this fourth heat of the men's 60 meters. Marvin Bracey there on the inside. Former footballer at Florida State University. Ran a fantastic 9.85 last year, but couldn't put a whole season together with a bad hamstring. Vargas from Paraguay, the only representative from his nation. Carlos Nascimento from Poland. The first of the Italians, Giovanni Galberti. Recently released a record to the Italian athlete. Ogunode here of Qatar, World Indoor Bronze in 2014, so he knows his way around this event. Lane 7 will be Przemysław Slowowski of Poland. That season's best of 6 seconds 61, could do him well here. And completing the lineup out in line, lane 8 is Karl Nazarov, national record this year, 6.62 for Estonia. He made the European final at this event indoors last season. Chat for Marvin Bracey in lane two, one of the fastest on paper. Oh, it did look like a slightly uneven start. If I was going to go the naked eye, I'd say one of those three indoor, in, inner lanes in the middle of the field. I know that's a bit of a broad guess. Just look over their shoulders. Yes, maybe Okunode there. Second from the right-hand side, it's Slavinski of Poland. There are a lot of poles here. He's got good support from the crowd, and it looks as though it's just an illegal start, less than 0.1, and that means, in theory, he is about to go, and that would be hugely disappointing for him, especially after getting that PB of 6.61 this year. Slavinski has to go. What a shame. Heartbreak for the Polish athlete. Is he going to ask to have a look at the screen? Experienced athletes will want to see a replay. But no challenge there. And Slavislavski of Poland. So we'll restart with Bracey in two, Vargas in three, Nasciszmiento in four, Galbieri in five, Okunode in six, and empty lane seven. Nazarov in eight. Set. <coughs> and though this time look at Bracey in two and Ogunode looking good out there in lane six will be Marvin Bracey from Femi Ogunode. Marvin Bracey, that 9.85 outdoors. It's really impressive. And if that clock's right, 6.46, that would be a new personal best for the American athlete. The first graphic we've seen has given that third place to Nazarov of Estonia. Nervous look up the screen. We've seen some changes between what we see in the screen and what the confirmed result is at the end. But Marvin Bracey, our clear winner there. <laughs> See what's going on behind. You can see the Estonians cheering their teammates on. That's because not only is he confirmed for the third spot, it's a national indoor record, 6.55. He's taken seven hundredths of a second off his lifetime best, and he was a long way clear of the rest. He came through brilliantly from, guess what, lane eight. See on lane eight there, Nazarov. Isolated following that false start, but it was a good start from Ogden No Day and Bracey. But Bracey and one. You often see these American footballers with this phenomenal start. They have to do the 40 meter sprint to kind of a fitness test in American football. And he did that in college and it's transferred really well into a different sport, into track and field. Ogden No Day there of Qatar. He looked good in lane six as well. Calbieri of Italy doing everything he could to hold on to. 
the world indoor bronze medalist from 2014. But Ogden Node navigating his way into that semi final. I'll be at 6.40 this evening. Number flying off the, uh, the thigh of Marvin Bracey, 6.46. Yes, he was working harder than Coleman, who was easing down, but he's quicker than him by five hundredths of a second. The two Americans looking the most impressive qualifiers so far. It was a lovely moment just when they were waiting for the results. I think it was Carol Tilger of Estonia. He's out there doing the pole vault in the, in the heptathlon, sharing those celebrations with Carl Nazarov as he got his Estonian national record. Has confirmed results of heat four of the men's 60 metres. A win for USA's Marvin Bracey in 646, the new personal best. Femi Ogunode getting that second automatic, automatic qualifying spot for Qatar. Third place goes to Carl Nazarov of Estonia in a new national indoor record. Well, we've seen some great performances from the Americans, Christian Coleman and Marvin Bracey with 6.51 and 6.46 respectively. What about the reigning Olympic champion? Lamont Marcel Jacobs, the man who had to switch to flat out sprinting after a succession of injuries as a long jumper and how that turned out for the good. One of the sport's brightest stars. The way he stormed to gold in Tokyo will never be forgotten. Miles Lewis of Puerto Rico, national indoor record holder. He starts on the inside in lane two. Good shape this year. Might need quicker than 661, though. Marcus Fuchs. Eight times a national indoor champion. Semis at the European indoors a couple of years ago. Then we have an empty lane and we go to Marcel Jacobs, the Olympic champion. He says, I started focusing on times and stopped enjoying it. I'm here to run for medals and I'm here to win. Jared Elcock, Trinidad and Tobago, Pan American relay silver medalist with his team back in 2019. Imranu Rahman of Bangladesh will be second nearest the camera and Hassan Saeed fourth in the Asian Championships for the Maldives a few years ago so lane four is empty the Honduran not able to start but all eyes on the Olympic champion Marcel Jacobs a false start here in Belgrade ten days or so ago but he says He's fully focused on the job in hand. He is here for more global medals. Coleman ran 6.51. That was the world champion in heat one. This is the Olympic champion in heat five. Set. Jacobs has had a good season. Good start, though, by Elcock just on his outside. Now the Olympic champion pouring on the pressure. Second from the outside, Rahman of Bangladesh ran really well to qualify alongside Elcock. Wow. That was really, really good by Marcel Jacobs. Lovely high knee lift. He was under a tiny bit of pressure with Elcock's start. But once he got into his rhythm, he was superb. 6.53, the unofficial time. It is game on in the battle between the Olympic champion and the world champion. Lamont Marcel Jacobs looking supremely relaxed there to win that fifth heat of the men's 60 metres. I wonder how much he was thinking about the false start he had here a few weeks ago. He was slightly tentative out of the blocks. He did get outdone by Elcott there on his outside for me. But Marcel Jacobs just getting into his running in the second half of the race and no one could live with him. What a great run from Imran Rahman of Bangladesh in lane seven, University of Birmingham student, graduate. He's finished now, but out here representing Bangladesh. See that discipline there, dipping all the way to the line. But Marcel Jacobs, he looked good. I think that should give Christian Coleman something to think about. 
Look at that knee lift. Totally relaxed as he came into the line. Elcock just out dipped Rahman. Just on the line. But this was about one man. Lamont Marcel Jacobs in lane five. He's going to have to run quicker than he's ever done before, perhaps, to beat Christian Coleman, but he's clearly in good form. The Olympic champion, a very, very impressive qualifier for the semi-finals. Elcock out-dipping Rahman, both of them will be in the semis and a national indoor record for the man representing Bangladesh. <laughs> to uh, still deliver your best under those environment, uh, under those emotions is really spectacular. Dabbler here of Togo. This is heat six of seven in the men's 60 metres. So we're moving towards the end of the quali opening qualifying rounds in this men's 60 metres. Just one more heat after this, and then we will turn our attention to the semi final. But these men are going to have a go at trying to make that semi final in lane two. Eli Al Belushi of Oman. Lane three, Rikoi Brathwaite, second place at the NCA Championships for Indiana University last week. Here competing for the British Virgin Islands today. It's a tough turnaround for the athlete. We have lane four, David Vivas, national record holder for Venezuela. And then we're hearing we've lost lane five and lane six. So quite a big gap before we get all the way out there into lane seven. It's Kakutsi Dabla, the Olympian from Togo. And completing the lineup in lane eight will be Guyana's Travis Collins, just 0.1 of a second off his personal best this season. You need every bit of that 661 pace to make this semi final. Three more automatic qualifying spots up for grabs in the men's 60 meter semi final. Good heat to be in. There's only five in the race. Set. And they're away cleanly. Pretty even across the two lanes. Maybe that lane eight, Travis Collins. Treating him very well. Hard to tell when the field is so spread out. I think Rikoi Brathwaite will be the favourite before the race started. He was the fastest on paper. Just powering away there in lane three. But that looked hard work for all of those men. None of them looked particularly relaxed or particularly confident. Here we go. The graphics changed already on our screen. Rikoi Brathwaite being given the win but like I say second place at the NCA championships last week that was the first race he's lost this season but that's a big journey to get all the way from Birmingham Alabama to Belgrade in Serbia but Rikoi Brathwaite's managed it and a great victory there for the British Virgin Islands very very close between the Guyanan on the outside, Collins and Brathwaite in three, both of them safely through. They're being separated by nothing more than a thousandth of a second. Vivas, the Venezuelan, dipped well for third. He's on the left of picture here with the British Virgin Islander on the right. I've been to the British Virgin Islands. They are such a proud nation. It's a succession of islands and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people on the main island of Tortola watching closely and news will be filtering back to the island and Virgin Gorda and Jos van Dijk that Brathwaite has made the semis. So watch on the left as Collins comes home, one thousandth of a second between them. I mean, it's much of a muchness 
Brathwaite was easing down towards the line. They're both there. Shows the importance of running through the line. No consequences here for Rakoi Brathwaite. He does take that second place and get another shot in the semi-finals. But Guyana's Travis Collins been given the nod by our track judges and the photo finish officials. Third place going to Venezuela's David Babis. Just five competitors in that after two withdrawals and that leaves us with one final heat in this men's 60 meter hurdles, 60 meter flat. And we'll turn our attention to this final heat of the men's 60 meters. Yes, we just saw Stephen Bastian running through on his latest effort in the pole vault, the men's heptathlon. We'll bring you up to speed with that as well. But yes, time for our seventh and final heat of the men's 60 metres. Francesco Sansovini of San Marino, a non-starter in lane three. There's Sean Safo Antwi of Ghanaia. He goes in lane four. Pallade Ajamale, semi-finalist in the World Indoors back in 2016. He goes in lane two, three wins this year. Then to Staffo Antwi, made the final four years ago when he was seventh. 6.55 and his lifetime best. He's not far off that kind of shape. Felipe Bardi in the lane outside him is in good form. South American champion indoors and outs. 6.62 a PB this season. Then to Pernell Delamini of Swaziland in the lane next to him. 10.68 outdoors, his best over the full 100. Adam Thomas of Great Britain, national indoor champion with a Scottish record, 6.56 this year. And Hassan Taftian, national record holder for Iran, over the 60 to 100 and the 200. Semi-finalist in the Olympic Games over 100 metres in Rio. He's a little way off his PB of 6.51. Ajamale in lane two for Canada. Safo Antwi, the Ghanaian, in four. Watch for the Brazilian just outside him in five. And Adam Thomas of Great Britain in lane seven will be second bottom from our picture. The last heat, the last three men to add their names to the list of those through to tonight's semi-finals in the men's 60 metres. Really good start by the Ghanaian in the distinctive yellow. And look at Adam Thomas coming through. Thomas and Ajumale in the end. Good work by the Briton and the Canadian. And unofficially, it looks as though Bardi may have taken that third spot from Safo Antwi of Ghana. He had the best start, but when Thomas got into his running, the race took on a different dynamic. Pretty close between the Briton and the Canadian, but lane seven and lane two making absolutely sure. Ajamale finishing well. Polade Ajamale is looking up at that screen. It's been given to him at the moment. He'll see his face up on that big screen with his Canada across his chest. Proud, but let's have a look at that race again. You can see Adam Thomas got a lightning quick start. Sean Safo Antwi did as well. I don't know what went wrong there for the Ghanaian athlete in the inside, but Adam Thomas powering away there in lane seven. But Bolade Ajamale was getting on with business very quietly there in lane two on his own. See that empty lane three between Ajamale and Safo Antwi. running at this stage. Ajamale, high stepping, relaxed, tall Canadian there in lane two. Under no pressure whatsoever, running his own race. We've seen that a few times in the opening rounds of these sprint events. Cool, calm look across. He didn't even have a dip. He knew he had that. Great Britain's Adam Thomas making it one Great Britain representative through to the next semi-final stage. Good running from Balade Ajamale, a PB with that 6.57 from lane two. Adam Thomas took the second spot. Bardi out dipping Safo Antwi on the line for the third automatic spot. Seven heats. 
and a whole host of men who will fancy they can try and topple the world champion Christian Coleman. Most notably, Marvin Bracey among them, his teammate, the fastest of the qualifiers, but Coleman was easing down on the line. Jacob, 6.53, so the world champion and the Olympic champion safely through. Arthur Cisse ran well from the Ivory Coast. Just down the bottom, Adam Thomas coming through. Another one of the athletes inside 6.6. Andrew Robertson made it through with 6.62. Raman of Bangladesh, a national indoor record, making it through with 6.64. Brathwaite of the British Virgin Islands coming home inside 6.7. Very competitive set of semi-finals still to come.